Uh, hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Isn't this exciting? Or, or as I like to call it, terrifying. <laughs> uh, I'm Charlie. Uh, this is Tom. We're going to give you kind of the J. Ruby State of the Union to start the day off. Um, first off, you know, huge thanks to Engine Yard for making this happen, happen in a very short time. Uh, I think we started discussing this around the beginning of September, and then within weeks we had it up to go. Uh, and the funny story, yeah, big thanks to Adrian Yard for this. And, you know, the funny thing is, when we opened up the registrations, I was terrified that no one was going to want to come to JRubyCon. And then they sold out like that. So that was a really exciting day for us. Um, you know, a couple words on Engine Yard. It's really been an amazing reception for us here. Uh, looking at getting JRuby development support, cloud offerings out there. Uh, anybody who is interested in looking at the cloud stuff or has, has tried some of the, uh, the, the beta support out, uh, you definitely should talk to Kirk Haynes. Where are you, Kirk? Right, right over here. Uh, and let, let them know what, you, what you've seen, what works for you, or, or you know, if you're looking to do JRuby stuff on the cloud in the future, what is it that you need out of that? Um, you know, JRubyConf obviously is a huge thing and, and lots and lots of support. It's been really a great experience for us coming to Engine Yard. Um, of course, I want to thank all of our sponsors. I was also worried nobody's going to want to sponsor this thing. It's just JRubyConf, right? But, you know, we, got, we obviously got a lot of sponsors, a lot of people that are interested in this. Uh, and, you know, the, these are all friends of JRuby, and we're really happy that you guys are able to help out with the conference. So thank you very much. Um, so who are we? Of course, I'm Charlie, and this is Tom. Hello. Uh, we also have Nick here somewhere. You can raise your hand, Nick. Uh, and Ola is here. There are other JRuby committers and, of course, lots of folks in the community, but uh, we're the ones that are here at the moment. So the first thing I wanted to find out is who are all of you? So how many people here have never tried JRuby? Okay. There, there's a few folks. Hands, it's cool. We can, we can pull, That's we'll, great. We'll, we'll, we'll bring you into the fold here. Um, how many of you have tried JRuby and maybe reported bugs, JRuby bugs? Okay, so you're the ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Probably about all right. 30 percent. Yeah, now we know. Now we know. How many contributed patches to JRuby? Uh, it's not. Smaller, but it's pretty, a smaller pretty amount. good. And that's that's an interesting problem, isn't it? That we have that many with bugs and fewer with patches. Uh, how many people are actually using JRuby in production for applications right now? Oh, awesome, awesome. Wow. And yeah. how many of those are uh, Rails applications? So well, it's not actually slightly a, less than slightly half. less. That's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. All right, cool. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll continue on. Uh, so we're going to do a little looking back, a little history of JRuby. Uh, not a lot of people know, JRuby was not actually started by any of the current committers. Uh, started as kind of a, a pet project, toy project, by this guy, Jan Arne Peterson, in about 2001. So it's actually a fairly old project. Um, since then, we've basically replaced almost all of the original code. But you know, Jan is, is out there somewhere. We've never met this guy, never talked to him in person. Yeah. Is he here? Are you, are you here now, <laughs> Jan? <laughs> we, we've never met him. Um, but there's some mythology behind this, and we're not sure if this is true, that uh, someone noticed that the C implementation of Ruby used a .y file, and, and someone said, well, I bet you can go and make that .y, .y file work in Java. And then I think it was Stefan Matthias Oust, of all people, who uh, cranked it out like a day later. And I think that was the motivation for starting. Right, right. But it's mythology, because we, we don't still, know. We still have not met any of those original guys. So someday, we're going to have to travel to you know, wherever those guys are and find them. Uh, about 2002, Tom came onto the project. Uh, I joined in 2004, immediately after RubyConf 2004, because I was so excited about Ruby at that point. Uh, 2006, Ola and Nick came in. And then since then, we've, we've added lots of new folks. We've had lots of community folks come in. Uh, and we're at round nine active committers right now. The most recent ads would be uh, Yoko Harada, who did the, all of the JRuby embedding APIs in the new 1.4, really awesome work. Uh, and Sabu Sastri, who's our compiler guy working on the new JRuby compiler. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. So big milestones. 2006 was, was uh, the beginning, really, of where JRuby started to actually be useful. Uh, in winter 2006, we thought, hey, maybe we can actually make JRuby run stuff that, that, that regular Ruby use, Rubyists are using. Before that time, it could run Ruby code, sort of, but the compatibility just wasn't there to run things that people are used to. Um, so we started out with IRB. That's kind of the first thing that you want to get going, because it has a lot of weird behaviors and requires a lot of core libraries. 
Um, got that working, you know, took a couple weeks worth of work, but it got, got, got it functional. Uh, and then rake and ruby gems. And then, you know, towards spring, we start thinking, hey, we've got these basic pieces working. We've got most of the core libraries functional. What if we, can, do you think we can actually get Rails to run on JRuby, on the JVM? And lots of people thought, no, that's, this is impossible. It's never gonna actually run with JRuby. <laughs> but um, uh, I guess it, it, Tim kind of, Tim Bray kind of lit a fire under <laughs> us and said, hey, you know, if you guys get uh, Rails working in time for Java 1, there might be some surprises for you. <laughs> And of course, the surprises meant that we spent all of Java 1 doing press and other nonsense. So that wasn't quite the surprise we were hoping for. Um, but in the fall, we finally managed to work with Sun and, and come on full time. And we got a lot of help over the years from Sun to, to really make JRuby go. So I, I would like a, a quick round of applause for everything that Sun has done for us in JRuby. So we should probably tell at least one story. Um, mm. So it was. Less than one week, I think like three days before Java 1, we got a, accepted for a talk and we, we did a few pretty late runs to try to get a spike to get Rails working. Mm. And then we were really excited. It was like three days before and Rails was running, but we'd go and like try to load a simple view and it would take like a half a second or three quarters of a second for one page view to come back and we're like, well, this is really impressive to us because we know how much work it takes to get Rails working, but right, right. the Java people are going to look at it and go, oh, wow, when can I start using Rails? You know? <laughs> um, but we don't know anything about Rails development. Uh -huh. um, we, we certainly know more now, but we're not Rails developers. And then we are at a coffee shop, and then Charlie's like, well, why don't I go and look to see how you tune Rails apps? And he's like, hey, we can set it into production mode, <laughs> which really... <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> and what an amazing discovery. All of a sudden, it ran fast enough to demo. <laughs> it was like a, like a switch flip. All of a sudden, hey, maybe this actually will be useful for some people. So that was pretty fun. Um, and then, you know, proceeding on, uh, 2007, you know, it was roughly seven or seven, eight months or so after we came to Sun, managed to get JRuby 1.0 out. And that was, that was a really exciting time. We had it running well enough that we thought people could put real apps up on it. And to our surprise, a few people did. ThoughtWorks and Oracle being among some of the earliest adopters that actually started building stuff off JRuby 1.0. We look back now and we think, God, you guys were nuts. That thing was nowhere near ready for, for production, but it worked and they managed to get it to go. Uh, in 2007 summer, we started working on the JRuby compiler, which led up to the 1.1 release in the winter of 2008, which was really the first JRuby release that actually ran Ruby code faster than, than the C implementation, which we really, was, we really knew we could get there, but we weren't sure when it would happen. So it was pretty nice to have that in JRuby 1.1. Uh, and then, uh, you know, continuing on, the fact that JRuby has always had native threads that actually run concurrently. Uh, in 2008, uh, the Rails thread safety work started. Uh, leading up to the, the Rails 2.2 release, the 2.2 release that, was, that had ThreadSafe support, and now there's a lot of folks running with JRuby in ThreadSafe mode and getting some, some amazing performance out of that. Uh, in, you know, in the fall of 2008, we started doing some more Java integration rework, trying to clean things up. And that brings us to 2009, which is obviously a huge year for JRuby. Uh, we've had three major releases. Uh, I, I ran some of the numbers last night, and we've had over 1,300 issues resolved in the past year. I don't know what that, that works out to four or five issues a day, something like that. Um, thousands of commits, thousands of commits. I think we have more, more commits in 2009 than in the entire rest of history of, of JRuby. Uh, and of course, the move to Engine Yard and JRuby comp. So it's been, it's been a great year. Uh, over these years, we've gathered lots of friends. Of course, Sun, Oracle, ThoughtWorks, uh, Collaborative Software Initiative has been a real big fan for their uh, Trisano product. Uh, LinkedIn's Polls was running on the last time I checked. Uh, Relevance has a whole bunch of JRuby stuff. And of course, there's lots and lots more. I mean, there's too many people to list that, that have been our friends over the year and helped us go, helped us get to, get to where we are now. So we've, we've come a long way from, from being the, the joke at Ruby, RubyConf 2005, where people went out of their way to put jokes in slides after my talk about how goofy JRuby was, to now actually people are running stuff in production with JRuby, and people are really, really excited about it. And that's, that's great. We've really, we managed to get a long way. Um, so, so where are we now? Uh, JRuby 1.4 is the most recent release, uh, just at the beginning of this month. Again, massive amount of work, 300 plus bug fixes since our 1.3 release in the summer. 
Uh, 1.8 support is now up to 187, so we finally made the move to 187. Seems like it was the right time to do it. Uh, the 1.9 support in JRuby 1.4 is improved. It's not quite complete yet, uh, but it is, it is a lot better, and we've got a bunch of contributors that are helping us get 1.9 really working solid. And the, uh, the basic uh, apps do work in 1.9 right now. You can generate a simple Rails app. You can run Ruby Gems, Rake, IRB. Right, exactly. So it, it, does, it does work, but there's a lot of edges that you'll hit if you start running it. So there's more work to do, but we're really glad with how much we've gotten done. Uh, an installer and a native executable for Windows. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about really trying to prioritize Windows support a little bit better. But this was a huge help for anybody that's running on Windows. Lots of Java integration improvements. Um, the new embedding API I mentioned from Yoko, uh, which has made it far, far easier to embed JRuby into existing Java applications. Uh, we have a bug for bug port of the Psych YAML parser, SIC YAML parser, uh, thanks to Ola. Uh, I think this is number four now, number four YAML parser for Ola. Uh, but it means that we actually have no open YAML bugs in the tracker anymore, which is... We have, well, I have a couple that I filed, and, so, and there's, a, there's a few others. But no, no user-reported ones, I think. So. So, so Ola's almost done as many YAML implementations as there are YAML implementations. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, if you want to know about YAML, if you want Ola to implement a YAML parser for you, you can go right to him. Never I'm again. <laughs> <laughs> never say never. <laughs> All right, lots more memory reductions. We did a little bit of work in 1.3, additional work in 1.4. Uh, updated all of the, the libraries we ship with, and then you know a little perform uh, focused performance fixes. So it's it was a really big release, at least as big as one two, which was probably the, the other like, gigantic release that we did in uh, in 2009. Um, again, a note on compatibility. I, we mentioned this in our JRuby talk at RubyConf. JRuby actually runs more tests than any other Ruby implementation. Uh, we run all of the Ruby spec, uh, up to 37,000 of them passing, which is you know high 90 percent, 98 something like. Uh, we also run a whole, whole set of other suites of tests. There's some overlap, of course. We don't know exactly where the overlap is, but we're terrified to pull out any of those other test suites in case they're not being covered by Ruby spec. So we run tons and tons of tests. Uh, continuous integration, we, we have the machine in my box that's keeping my basement warm, is um, actually running up Java 5, Java 6, and Java 7 versions of four different vendors of JVMs on every commit. And that's Ruby spec and all of the other tests. And then every night we run on one of those, one of those job implementations with all of the different JRuby settings and configuration options, which is about a, about a 30 minute test run. So we've got a lot of testing going on. I think that, that machine well, runs continuously. And we're also running unit tests for Ruby on Rails. Yep, and we've also got Rails stuff running on there. And we're just gonna start pulling in some <laughs> sp specific gems, some important gems, so that they run on continuous integration as well. Um, incompatibilities, there are a few things that we, we still need to work on or may never be able to support, like fork. You're not going to be able to fork a JVM anytime in the near future. Though strangely, we do have an option to turn it on. Yes, yeah, you can, you can play with that if you really want to. Uh, and fork is there, but I don't recommend it. Don't use it. <laughs> uh, no continuations, at least until the JVM has continuation support. Um, startup is always a challenge for us, and it's probably one of the, the main things that drives people away from JRuby. So we constantly are trying to improve that, trying to solve startup issues and make it, make it a little bit faster each release. And I think I saw that Vladimir is working on that a little bit now, too. Uh, and of course, the C extension thing, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about later and, and try and find ways that we can work around that problem. Uh, so a little bit about the JRuby community, which is a lot of you folks and a lot of folks that, that weren't able to make it here. Um, nine active committers, as I mentioned. We've had dozens of external contributors, probably hundreds of external contributors over the years, but uh, uh, dozens that are active right now submitting patches. Uh, we have no idea how many users there are. Every time we go to a conference, we hear from another dozen people that we didn't even know about before. So it, there's lots and lots of folks out there that are using JRuby. Uh, and it feels like we're kind of at a tipping point. There's more and more people that are actually starting to use it. We've gotten to compatibility point where people can just take their apps and run them and, and that's great, and we're really so, happy that things work so well. So if we can ask one thing, if you've actually deployed a production JRuby application and you're allowed to talk about it, 
please tweet it or blog it or let us know. Update we want to know. Wiki, um, <laughs> join our mailing list and say it because it's it's really nice to actually see that people are using JRuby. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. A lot of shy people in the world. Yes, yes. Well, and I think uh, a lot of the Java world is kind of you know we'll keep everything behind the firewall and never really talk about it. I didn't subscribe to Struts lists when I was doing Struts development, so I, I can appreciate that. But we really would love to hear from you guys. Um, okay, so we got talks at just about every Ruby conference, more than we can cover, and so there are other people that are picking up some of the slack for us. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later, too. Uh, and, and we feel like JRuby really is part of Ruby. It's part of the Ruby community now, and that, that makes us really happy that we've, we've kind of been accepted into the Ruby world. JRuby is, is everywhere. People are doing stuff with JRuby all over the place. Uh, everything from cloud applications to JRuby in your pocket. There's all sorts of stuff that's going on. Uh, we're trying to support all of these different layers. If, you, if you're interested in any one of these, please let us know. We'd really like to know who's doing desktop and games and mobile and whatever else, because uh, there's, there's, there's so many opportunities. Since Java is everywhere, JRuby can really bring Ruby to all these different domains, and that's, that's what we really want to make possible. Uh, and we've had, got, gotten even more friends over the past year or two. Uh, Guilt Group, we heard, is doing a whole bunch of JRuby stuff. It sounds like the, a, 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 huge, a huge amount of traffic going through their JRuby servers. Uh, Oslo's airport now running the uh, JRuby point-of-sale terminal for refueling airplanes, which is a little, a little scary for us, but... It's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot scary for us. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot it's, scary. It's almost like running Twitter. <laughs> oh, not quite that bad, not quite that bad. Um, the Allen Telescope Array up at UC Berkeley uh, is using JRuby as kind of the glue to script together all of the different components and all the different drive systems and everything. Uh, and the, the great quote we got from those guys is, if we, are, if we find intelligent life out there, JRuby will have helped to find it. So that's, that's pretty cool too. Uh, Pons.eu is a very large European dictionary site. Uh, they switched to JRuby because they needed to basically have the entire dictionary in memory, uh, multiple gigs of data, and that was the only way they could do that was to run on JRuby, and it runs great for them. Uh, Daytech Wireless has some stuff going with JRuby, uh, and of course Edgecase is doing JRuby stuff. So, you know, again, more, more people than we can list that are actually using JRuby in production and are really happy about what's, and, what they're getting out of it. And so if you're not shy, your name could be here next year. That's right, that's right. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll hand it off to Tom a little bit to, to talk about some of the future of where JRuby's going. Um, so these are some near-term goals that we have, or at least near-term issues that we recognize that we have. Um, so the first one is Windows, uh, and this is actually quite funny, because what the hell are we thinking? Um, we, we, we don't like Windows and working on Windows, so we didn't really give it a lot of attention, because, you know, we have MacBook Pros and whatnot, but uh, how many Java developers are on Windows? So, so There's a how, lot of them. How many I mean people use Windows here? Wow, right, right. Less, less, less than people supplying patches to JRuby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but be that as it may, um, a vast majority of people who do Java are on Windows, and we think we need to go after Java folks more. Right, um, well, and an interesting story about this, we put the Windows installer out there, and suddenly we had a whole bunch of new users coming and reporting issues with our Windows support, which is actually why we ended up doing an RC2 and an RC3. Uh, all these Windows users realized that there were things that just didn't work, and until we had the nice installer, we didn't even know these people were out there. It was probably one of the biggest upticks in traffic was when we got nice Windows support. So yeah, the, those people are out there, and we really do need to support them it, well. It was literally bad enough that we realized that our dot .bat script sucked so bad that we had to make a native launcher. So, mm -hmm. hey, it's great. We're going to keep doing this and see how many more Windows users we can get. And JRuby may be the cleanest and most compatible way to run Ruby on Windows right now because we have put in a lot of work. And, and, and we have a few problems that we've had forever, and we know we've had them forever. Um, our JRuby launcher on Unix is, is a shell script, and there's some libraries that will actually, in the shebang line at the top of scripts, put options to JRuby. Well, you can't pass that to a shell script and have it see that. So we have a large motivation to actually make native launchers for all the Unixes. Right, hopefully in 1.5 we'll have native launchers for all the different platforms so we can get around the, the bash script stuff. And then we also have this problem where we'll submit, we'll submit a uh, issue for Mac ports to say, hey, 1.4 is out now, you need to put it in there. 
four or five months later, you know, it shows up. <laughs> and by that point, we're already on the next version. So yep, yep. we want to we want to have native installers so that uh, people can just download it off their site. Right. So have a package installer or a, a shell script installer or something like that that actually puts it in place for you. Horizontal Java integration. Um, we want to just kind of fill out the rest of the spaces that we know haven't been implemented yet. We want to um, make Ruby to Java really generate uh, um, a dot class file for any particular feature of Java, like annotations. Right. Um, we have tons of little corner cases that most people don't run into when they actually consume Java classes, but. Um, they're there, and so we want to fix those. Right, we know about those. And really, this is about trying to get across all libraries, across all use cases, all the little Java features in JRuby working really well. And vertical Java integration. This is similar to the whole Windows problem that uh, Java people actually use Java in their own Java projects. Surprisingly. And, yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. But. Uh, if you want people to use JRuby and use Ruby on Rails, you want to integrate into their environment. Um, so we'd like to be able to easily consume hybrid aid objects from Ruby on Rails. Um, and if there's any experts out there, I think we'll reiterate this call for experts like two or three more times. Um, or uh, we want to make sure that their testing environment, it's very easy to plug in to JRuby and their build, just their environment in general. And uh, um, also, there's been a lot of interest lately in people actually calling across to different languages on the JVM. So there was, what was it, Scallop? What was the? Scooby. Scooby. Scooby is the, the Scala <laughs> JRuby wrapper. And I know there's, a, I saw there's a lightning talk proposed for JRuby with Clojure. And we want to make that all as easy as possible and make it fit really well. It's, it's really a benefit of being on the JVM that you can use these other languages for the purposes they're really good at. Startup time, as Charlie mentioned earlier, is an issue that we're working on. Um, if you learn nothing else today, learn that stat is the root of all evil. Yes. Um, it's almost always your performance problem for some strange reason. So we actually have a statistic up here. Um, a medium-sized Rails app, we measured the number of stats that happened, and it statted about 113,000 times to load 3,000 files. It's um, a lot, a lot of, <laughs> lot of file system access and a lot of memory access. A whole lot of nothing going on, and I, I, I think uh, um, we're doing like four times as many stats as the the C implementation of Ruby. So right, and this was really a big. This really is a big impact on slower file systems. Like if you're running on Google App Engine, stats are extremely slow, and file system access is extremely slow. And those guys, they, it was almost unusable to get it to start up. And this is a large reason why. And so we're going to look to try and fix this as much as possible. And, and there's a bunch of things that we're doing that aren't being used. Someone recently brought up to our attention that set accessible is getting called like 5,000 times when Rails starts up. And uh, this is to do things like set protected methods so that we can call them even though we're not in the same Java package. But mm -hmm. we probably only call these methods like once or twice. So we're doing 4,998 too many set accessible calls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And uh, we also have this thing called Nailgun, which is a separate process that gets spawned in the background and it starts up the JVM, it loads JRuby up, and then if you invoke command line invocations of JRuby, it'll actually forward that response there. Yeah, and it just sort of tosses it over to that running instance. Now things like auto test um, will execute extremely fast because it doesn't have to wait for everything to start up right, each time. Right. There's still some issues trying to get Rails to boot fast even on that remote system, but it's, it's helped. We're getting there. And, and the reason is stat. Yeah, that probably is stat. Um, C extensions, uh, um, similar to not reporting that you've deployed production apps, we also don't know which gems aren't working for people. So every time you run into a gem that doesn't work or is because it's a native extension or there's just a bug in it, Please report it to our um, issue tracking system. Right. Or right. at least know that it doesn't work. Right. Don't assume that it's the gem's fault either. You know, we're willing to do a little footwork ourselves to see if it's JRuby. If it turns out it is the gem that's that's got a problem, um, you know, we'll toss it back to the gem authors or try and help them. But we which we just want to know what works and what doesn't. And Right. There is also is it jruby.com, which you can start to use to, to, to report things. And hopefully, you know, we'll get some metadata like that included in the in the gem in rubyforge.org stuff. Or yeah, rubygems.org. 
And uh, we've been pushing for and function interface as a way of uh, solving native C extensions. Uh, if you go and do the work and provide that to the gem maintainer, they're probably fairly likely to accept it. Um, but of course, you can write Java native extensions if you want, and then that's a little more friendly for Google App Engine and, and solutions like that. Right. There are a lot of environments that simply, even with, even with FFI, are not going to be able to load native libraries. So there is always a push to get a pure Java version of anything that's, that's native for regular Ruby. And of course, if anyone has any ideas on how to fix this disparity between C extensions and Java extensions, come up and talk to us. It's likely we didn't think of something. Um, Actor record JWC, these are sort of some hip ironic statements. Uh, um, MySQL adapter is not yet perfect. Um, what this means is for the last three years, we've never had a green run of MySQL unit tests on Active Record. And uh, the other adapters are in various states of disrepair. They, they generally work for common stuff, but we know that we have to work on this. this and is I think a uh, priority. Nick's going to spend a little bit of time on this in his talk. And if anyone's having performance issues with Active Record JVC, um, come and talk to us. We did some optimizations for queries like eight or nine months ago and got the performance pretty good, but. There certainly is a chance that it's Active Record as well. But uh, if, it's, if it's something specific to us and we're significantly slower than running on regular Ruby, we definitely want to know about that. Uh, geeking out. Okay, so we'll talk about some, some cool stuff that's coming up for JRuby, a little bit more, uh, kind of a more positive spin on some interesting things coming for JRuby in the future. Java 7 um, will be coming out someday. Someday, <laughs> yes. I think it was pushed back again, so. It's, it's up to milestone 5, so they're, they're moving along. October 2010? October, okay. wow. Ola is always the source for the latest up to the minute Java reporting. <laughs> he told us three days ago that closures were going to be in. So. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, so invoke dynamic uh, is a way of informing the JVM how we want to do method dispatch as opposed to how Java actually does method dispatch. And the benefit of this is that it'll do a whole bunch of optimizations. We'll get to get rid of a whole bunch of special code we do to get good performance out of Java 6 and Java 4. Right. Basically allows us to inform the JVM of the best way to do a dynamic call for Ruby so that it can optimize our dynamic calls the same way, the same way that it optimizes all the other Java calls. And uh, I think they're talking about the, the, the JVM guys are pretty convinced <coughs> that they can make this at least as fast as running with a, like an interface call in regular Java, which would be pretty exciting. And we're, we're looking forward to all the optimization coming from that. Um, Sun recently started having these JVM Language Summit conferences, and it's been really great because we've had direct interaction with JVM engineers. Of, well, of course we did when we were working at Sun, but uh, um, they, they started to realize that some of the uh, ergonomics they have for tuning garbage collection and these various internal settings are pretty good for Java, but they're not so good for languages like uh, Ruby where you create a lot more objects and there's different needs. Yes. So yes. there should be some better ergonomics for supporting uh, different languages on the JVM. Right. And escape analysis is listed at the bottom, but there's always a collection of new optimizations that are coming in each version of Java. And whenever we upgrade Java, we're always pleasantly surprised to see our benchmarks speed up by 15 or 20 percent and we're not doing anything other than upgrading. Yeah, so. it's nice to get free performance upgrade just by going to a newer JVM. Um, we're going to we're working on a new internal representation instead of our older AST, and there's a next generation compiler. In fact, we have this compiler guy. He's, uh, <laughs> his nickname's Sabu. I mm -hmm. um, can't pronounce his name. Subramanian. All right, good, very good. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, he got his PhD in writing an optimized Java, Java compiler, and now he's trying his hand at making an optimizing Ruby compiler. And the interesting part of this versus our old compiler is that these are higher level Ruby optimizations. So um, we'll, be do Ru we'll do Ruby in method inlining. So in the old compiler, we would still um, generate the bytecode for doing a method dispatch and then um, hope that Hotspot would go and optimize that away. And actually, Hotspot does a really good job, but there's still a certain level of irreducibility that uh, we couldn't get past. Right. Right. We hope that uh, we're, we're, we're going to try and give Hotspot a little bit more information about how to optimize Ruby code, maybe do a little bit more up front so that it doesn't have to work quite so hard, and then uh, we'll get a better performance as a result. 
And so there's some other cool stuff like uh, Ruby type propagation. Um, we might not actually create a Ruby fix num at all. We'll just use a Java primitive to go and loop over or something. Or um, Ruby block inlining. I don't know how many people know this, but invoking a block is quite a bit slower than invoking a Ruby method. So If we can get that to inline all the way back to the place you call each or map or whatever, we can probably just reduce it down again to a loop. Um, so Doobie is one other thing I've been playing with. Um, I did did a talk, my second talk ever on Doobie at RubyConf. Um, it's something else that we're looking at as kind of an experimental thing for future JRuby contributors can possibly use this to help write JRuby. Um, if you need to write one-off Java code and you don't want to write Java, you can use something like Doobie to generate that code. Uh, and, and, and you know, learning, learning different ways that we can use this to improve JRuby and bring some of this back. Uh, if you want to know more about Doobie, I know that my talk from RubyConf is going to be online. Uh, I did another talk at Strange Loop, and you know, hopefully this will help bring more Ruby folks that really don't know Java or Java syntax uh, so that they can help JRuby uh, move forward a little bit. So library optimizations. Uh, realize, uh, um, recently we realized that uh, one of the most common enumerable types uh, or enumerable consuming types was a, a Ruby array. And we realized we could make a fast path through there. And by doing that, we ended up getting a 20 to 30% speed jump over what we had, which already was pretty good performance. And uh, for very common types, we're going to start doing some profiling with Rails and figure out what things are getting hit and try to do more optimizations like this. Right. Getting things to <laughs> run is, is only the first 10% of doing Ruby. Then you have to go back and figure out all the core classes and all the bottlenecks and make sure everything's running fast. And that's, and that's an endless process. But uh, th lot, we're coming back around to some of those now. There's a lot of interesting side effects. Like um, these optimizations also produce less garbage, which has less GC pressure, one of our Favorite terms now. Yes, yeah. And actually, uh, there are paces where we're doing very well. Uh, some of the numbers reported in RubyConf were that uh, JRuby's hash operations are probably the fastest of any of the Ruby implementations at this point. Uh, if we can spend that kind of effort on other core classes, you know, things will be that much better. If the array can be that fast, we'll be in great shape. Okay, um, taking a little inspiration from Yagui, uh, Yagui in her talk at RubyConf was. Um, had had the word help written in like 96 point font, <laughs> and this this is this is a common thing that all open source projects have is they have a need for help. They always want more people to help contribute. Um, one of the things that Yugui wanted was for people to go and try to take maintainership of certain aspects of the Ruby standard library, and that's also helpful for JRuby. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, she's in like the fifth row right now. So. Get yes, her. definitely um, help out Ruby Core or JRuby or whatever. <laughs> Contributors are what keep these projects going. But from this point on, I'm going to talk about how you can just help the JRuby project. <laughs> um, <laughs> so here's a graph uh, of our issue tracking system. And this is pretty illustrative of how development works on the JRuby project. So when you see green, that means we're fixing more issues than are coming in. When you see red, well, we're, we're hemorrhaging issues. <laughs> we're falling behind. Yeah, so when you get close to a release like JRuby 1.4. Um, yeah. That's that line in the middle there is the JRuby 1.4 release. We start to get much more anxious or nervous about fixing issues. We're spending a lot more time triaging. We're begging people to go and submit patches. And we make a dent. And then we release uh, a new version of JRuby, and then people try it, and then <laughs> and then, then it goes the other direction. It goes the other way. And so it's kind of hard to read on here, but this 30-day summary shows that in the past month, we've had 110 issues reported. And that works out. And that's about right. We, it works out to three or four issues per day, every day, for the past three years. So we, the fact that we've managed to only fall behind by a couple hundred issues is amazing. But it's, it's a constant stream of things and a, a constant amount of work that's required to keep up with it. Okay, um, but before we talk about new people joining the project, we should probably acknowledge a few people uh, who have already been helping. Um, we, we had a, a committer, Vladimir. He took like a one-year hiatus or maybe health leave, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, he's a phenomenal developer. Uh, <laughs> if you look at issues created in the last uh, two weeks, like 75% were actually created by him. <laughs> and... 
Thankfully, he actually fixes more bugs than he reports. Yes, he's <laughs> carbon, carbon negative, I think. <laughs> and uh, um, then there's people like Hiro Asari, who I, is in the front he's row. Here, yes. And David Calavera, they're sort of tag teaming to um, address failing Ruby specs, and they do a lot of great patches and triaging of the problems. And there's just so many other people on the project. Like we had people raise their hands earlier, and it was like 15% here. It's very impressive. And again, you could be your name could be here. We love to have you help out and contribute in any possible way, and we'll, we're willing to hold your hand the entire time and try and make it easy for you. Help. <laughs> Okay. Evangelism. Um, we made a recent realization that Charlie can only do so many presentations a day. So <laughs> we, we, need, uh, we need people in um, different parts of the country or the world to be able to do regional um, Ruby conferences, regional Java conferences. Java conferences especially. There's, there's a lot more than we can even cover. And that's a huge, huge area for JRuby to grow and to grow the Ruby world. And, and, and user groups and, you know, the truth is people that actually use JRuby on a day-to-day -day basis can do a better job of selling it than we can because people always think that we have an ulterior motive because our jobs are developing JRuby. Right, right. Especially, especially people that are running this stuff in production and know that it works great. You know, get out there and spread the word and, and you know, ma let people know how well this stuff actually works. It was, it was mentioned before, but... Uh, um, we don't know Ruby on Rails. Nick does, but uh, we need people that are willing to go to particularly Java conferences and do JRuby on Rails tutorials. Uh, how many screencasts do we have? I, I think it's That's still zero. Zero, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> let's. Uh, if anyone likes doing screencasts, that would be great. People love screencasts. We're willing to walk you through it and provide scripts and uh, all, the, all the details that you need to build it. We just have no idea how to do screencasts ourselves. Blog, tweet, generate interest, have fun. Um, documentation, this is always like the, the saddest plea because no one likes writing documentation and we're not writing documentation, so why are we asking this? But. Uh, <laughs> um, Yoko Harada recently um, got her new embedding framework merged into the JRuby project. And one of the reasons why she was able to do this so easily is that she wrote awesome documentation. She set up a wiki, and we have nice like little cut and paste snippets that we can go and um, paste in and compile. It was very easy for us to review and figure out how well it fit the bill. And We've had an overwhelming response from folks that are doing embedding of JRuby with this API. Um, it's, it's an incredible amount of work on the documentation, and it shows how much that really can help when you have a good set of examples and some good walkthroughs. We just wish we had this for everything in JRuby. So has anyone used Redbridge yet since it came out? Use the JRuby yeah. embed container yeah, stuff? I think two people. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so again, uh, a call for feedback. Um, Try to test gems that you use. Uh, um, try to run the unit tests or, or specs for that gem. And if there's problems, report them. It could be a problem in how they're testing, which you'd be helping that project. And if it's not, then we'll fix the problem. Yep, yep. Um, Multi-threading is kind of a bigger order to ask of you. But if you're running your Ruby on Rails app in multi-threaded mode, just doing a simple code audit, looking for like lazy, um, lazy initialization of class variables, or things that obviously couldn't work in a multi-threaded environment. Globals are not something you should probably be using in multi-threaded environments. You know, if they're if they're if they're not putting locks around these things, then they're obviously wrong. So, mm -hmm. and the definitely we want to know if there's performance. If specific gems have performance issues, and really, if any piece of Ruby code has performance issues, we want we have a performance category in our bug tracker, and we want to know about those so we can figure out why it's not running as fast as it should be. And Ruby specs an amazing project. Um, it helps us define what Ruby is, and more specs gives us more confidence that we really are Ruby. Um, Yagui, in her talk, went and brought up the fact that we have this language divide between Japanese and English, and but we all speak Ruby, and Ruby spec gives us a really unambiguous way of talking about what Ruby is. 
Right, right. It's our, it's our chance to really show that, that Ruby is a great language and help define what it means to the rest of the world. This is what's going to ensure that all Ruby implementations can run Ruby and, and are reliable in the future. So we, we all need to try and contribute to it. Everybody should submit a patch to Ruby spec at some point. That's right. And it's very easy to get a commit bit. Yes. Um, Ruby 1.9 support is something that we all want to make sure is a great first first production release, so if you can, in particular, work on Ruby 1.9 specs, that would be even better. Right, it's a perfect example. We, we can't really do want Ruby 1.9 support and know that it runs well until we know what Ruby 1.9 is supposed to do. And although the, the, the MRI tests are great and they, they, do, they do cover quite a bit, we need to have full-on spec support and have full, all of the Ruby 1.9 features in there. And of course, hacking. Um, I suspect most of the people here actually write code on a day-to-day -day basis, so this is probably the easiest slide to help with. Um, help us fix any of the pain points that we listed before, obviously, but try to scratch your own itch, because uh, um, odds are if you're having a problem, someone else is having the same problem. Um, and vertical integration, again, if you know Hibernate um, well. Hibernate, JPA, Spring Persistence, other libraries. We'd love to have people wrap some of that stuff. And actually, that's one of the biggest ways that we've drawn people into using JRuby. They want to use Lucene or one of these other libraries, but they hate using the Java API. Someone comes along, writes a nice Ruby wrapper for it, really easy to do if you know the API, and then everybody's able to use that library from within Ruby applications. And if you're in a mixed mode uh, um, environment where you have Java application framework stuff and Ruby and Rails stuff running side by side, you should talk to us and help identify what the pain points are because right. we want to improve that picture. Absolutely. So, you know, in general, the future looks really bright. Everything is running really well. Performance continues to improve release on release. We continue getting Java integration all solidified and, and fixing all the remaining issues. And, we're really excited. We're really glad that you're all here, and we want to keep making JRuby the best possible tool for you. Oh, and, and, and we have one more thing, one more little announcement, which is exciting. Yes, we finally will be getting a JRuby book out. We have, we have several chapters done already. It's, uh, you know, the, the core JRuby folks and our friend Ian, who's been an amazing lead author for us. Uh, raise your hand, Ian. Yes, uh, great, Th big, big thanks to Ian for this. Um, we're not sure when we're going to have a beta or when we're going to have a final book, but it is moving along and uh, it, it's looking great. We've got a lot of good content in there. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to accelerate a little bit after the conference season uh, kind of calms down now. And so that's it. You know, enjoy the show, everybody. I, I would love to talk to each and every one of you about your JRuby uses. I'm not sure we're going to get to that. But uh, you, if you have something specific, come and grab us uh, in between and at lunch, in the hallway, whatever. And, uh, you know, have fun. We got a lot of good talks and a lot of other JRubyists here. So make sure you talk to other people and meet other folks. Thanks a lot. So what's the schedule? I think this was supposed to go to 10.50 and we're...